is Chloe Hudson with World Peace Projects. Thank you for joining me. So I'll be attending my friend Vikings podcast this Thursday, January 26 at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you would like to tune in, I'll leave the information below. And today I would like to focus again on fear. So we've talked about fear before, and it's something that we all deal with almost every day. I, I believe every day, at least subconsciously. And the reason I want to address fear again is because I find that right now, as we are all releasing our last vestiges of the dark night of the soul, or maybe you've already released your dark night of the soul, though there are lingering illusionary root beliefs inside your being, you know, our everyday anxieties or worries, whatnot. I think it's important to understand and have a intimate relationship with fear on a more conscious level. And the reason I believe this is because, or rather the reason this is my truth, is because when I did the original channeling of fear, which is posted on one of the videos in my on my channel, you can find it under fear, and I did a talk on fear, I became dear friends with fear because I realized just as I've already known about all emotions and all that is, is its own consciousness. So everything that we feel, every thought we have, every cell in our body, every part of us, every piece of hair, on and on it goes, has its own consciousness. So in the way I like to think of it is I've got a bajillion friends that I can connect with at any one moment. Friend, uh, fear is one of my dear friends now because fear is a being that we've all utilized. We have an extremely intimate relationship with fear. We have instigated fear so much in our lives. And while we pull fear in, we call fear to, to us, we're addicted to fear, we're attached to it, we don't always know how to let it go. While we keep it really close to us, we don't appreciate it. I don't think many people by any means appreciate fear. Possibly those who are what we would deem as the most courageous in this life have come to acknowledge that fear is, is something that helps them grow because the higher self of fear is courage, is bravery. And once you make this connection that you can ascend and transmute your fear, you can up level into courage, that lesson is extremely powerful and it, it transcends ego. It gives us this boost, this energy, this adrenaline that's beyond our ego, and it exhilarates our entire body. I think that at this time, while fear is pushing all of us to free it, fear is ready to graduate. Fear has been ready for quite a while to embody fully its highest self, courage. And fear, in a way, is allowing itself to be trapped in the illusion because fear has made the agreement to, to ascend with us, ascend with the humans, and it will only fully graduate when we fully graduate because all of us hold on to it in some form. So until we fully release fear, fear will not ascend into its higher self courage, though fear is completely ready to ascend. So as I speak of it as a friend, that's how I deal with it when it comes up. When fear comes up in me, again, remember we've had the lesson before where if you're feeling an emotion, it's important to know that you are not that emotion. So when I say, I am so scared right now, I am owning that emotion. I just turned fear into me, but that's not accurate. Fear is my friend. I can say, I'm feeling fear right now. Hey fear, you're here. How can we work together to move through this fallacy, this illusion, false evidence appearing real, frequency energy activating release? So how can fear and I work together to move through this illusion and find the courage, find the other side of it so that we can ascend together? This is extremely important because fear, um, because of our fight and flight, because of our ability to grab onto emotions and trauma and store it in our cells, fear often gets locked and contained in our body. And that's very important to release it fully because 
while you might do energetic work on fear, if you haven't released it from inside your muscle memory, from inside your cells, from inside the Akash, from uh, the fight or flight that's possibly been activated in your life from that past experience or trauma or post-traumatic stress disorder, you've locked in this fear into your cells, into your lymphatic system, into your tissue. And the only way for you to clear it is to release it out of your body. There's a lot of ways to do this, just like there's a lot of methods to heal. Um, you have to find what works for you. Though it is important, in my opinion, to register that fear is its own being, that you have the ability to have a relationship with, to look at in a different perspective, to observe, to become friends with, and to register that you and I and everybody else has engaged with fear. We've pulled fear in. We do not necessarily appreciate fear. We have often taken advantage of fear and we have this interesting love-hate relationship. It's like we keep it really close, but we don't want it. But, and, and so fear is highly devalued. And I think because people are scared to face fear, to look at fear, it keeps it that much more trapped. So you have to register when fear comes up, just like any other emotion, the only voice it has to, to talk to you is through its energy, through its emotion. So maybe if you wanna try next time you get scared, if you have the ability, step back and say, wait a minute, I'm so engrossed in this experience right now that I'm owning this fear, but I'm not really registering curiously that I'm feeling fear. I could look at this as actually fear is talking to me. And the only way it has to talk to me is through the feeling of fear. And in that way, maybe you can find the ability to be a little bit more detached, to be a little bit more curious. It could even be lighthearted and playful because now you're registering that this fear isn't necessarily a scary thing. It's just an unknown language to you. It's a language you've heard all of your life and you've experienced, but maybe you never delved in to really study it, to understand it, to translate it. So let's start translating our fear because fear wants to go just as much as you want it to leave and it will help you release it. You can pray to it, you can talk to it as a friend, you can meditate on it, you can just be present. Just like you need support from time to time and to be heard and understood, fear also needs its needs met. So if you show up for fear, like you do for a friend or a loved ones, I think you would be amazed at how swiftly you can release fear. And also, if it isn't extremely swift, at least you have an acceptance of walking the path with fear and understanding that while fear is here, it also has its own trials and tribulations. So in a way, fear can relate to your troubles. I find that at this time, while fear is, is working extremely diligently to clear, it's that much more easy to clear it. And if you register your relationship with fear, fear becomes extremely grateful and works with you to uproot all of its components that you've embodied different types of fear, different experiences of fear, different versions of fear, you know, i.e. worry, anxiety, stress, all of those things, it will help you uproot, which isn't comfortable, of course, but it has to be done. It will help you bring up all of the frequencies of fear, all of the, the angles of fear that you utilize to clear it. And it will be gentle with you. When you acknowledge and find gratitude for fear, fear will work with you. And it's an extremely amazing experience because that's the path to courage. And everybody who's experienced courage and bravery in your life, I would think that you find it quite enjoyable. I know that I do. Fear has so much appreciation to me for the acknowledgement I have given it. And I feel so grateful and, and tender with fear now. I really love fear for all that it's done for us because fear is one of the 
the most potent agents of change in my perspective to our ascension as a human. Gift of free will that Earth Mother has given us allows us the ability to, to try and try again. We, we try something, we fail, we do it again. And this method of learning creates an extremely rapid ability to ascend. It might not seem like it in our illusion, but it's accurate. We're evolving so quickly and fear has given us the ability to move into hyperdrive because when people are in fear, they go into fight or flight, they panic, they want out, they get moving. They don't usually walk real slow and move kind of sluggish through fear. While we tend to build a capacity to get comfortable, quote unquote, in being in fear, many people live in fear their whole life. It might just be a kind of a mellow undertone of everything that they do if they live with anxiety you know or or, or uh, there's somebody who just worries all the time though it doesn't make it comfortable and they've often found very interesting unique ways to shift into into a different perspective or cover the fear you know like addictions or anything that we do to mask our feelings though Fear makes us move. It is a change agent. And because of that, I feel, I don't want to say indebted, but I feel extremely grateful to fear. And I would love to help fear release. We can do this together. If all of us are working on fear, we can offer this to the World Server Pyramid and help the world move out of fear. Because while fear inspires some crazy actions in people, on the flip of that, it has the ability to inspire the most beautiful creative works. So I hope that this gives you a new perspective, a new way to look at fear, and please acknowledge fear for how much it's helped you grow. I bet if you took a minute and thought about it, you can see different times in your life where you really catapulted to a different level because you moved through fear, or you had an experience of fear, or you transcended it. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day.